Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to episode number 24 of my SPSS tutorial videos here on YouTube. Today we're going to take another look at the factor analysis like we did in the last episode. Last episode I showed the basics of the factor analysis, so what it actually does and at, uh, how you should interpret the pattern matrix. And today we're going to dive a little bit deeper and take a look at the pre-required conditions your dataset should meet if you want uh, uh, factor solution, uh, if you want the factor analysis to be useful, because if your if your data set, so your data does not meet uh, the KMO and the Bartlett's test of sericity, then it's not helpful to do a factor analysis. So it should meet those requirements, and what those requirements are and where you can find them, I'm going to show in this video right now. So if this video is helpful to you in any way, shape or form, then please leave a like. Uh, I would uh, immensely appreciate it. It's a small, very small uh, action. Just leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I will be uploading way more SPSS in the future. And I want to make this channel grow as much as possible. So that would be very helpful. Okay, so we can f uh, gonna take a look at the same data set as yesterday, which contains 10 motivation items, uh, five of which five are extrinsic. For example, I get to go on vacation and I like my salary. Those are extrinsic motivation items and five items are intrinsic motivation. So I feel useful when I do my job and I can develop myself uh, and stuff like that. And yesterday in the, uh, with the pattern matrix, we have actually uh, proven that there are two underlying dimensions. So we're going to go uh, do another factor analysis. We're going to go to analyze dimension reduction factor they are gonna select the 10 variables being extrinsic one into extrinsic five and intrinsic one into intrinsic five and this time you're gonna go to descriptives and select initial solution coefficients significance levels determinants and of course KMO and Bartlett's test of sericity you press continue then with extraction, uh, you leave it as it is, so analyze the correlation matrix, which is important, and you don't need to display the scree plot uh, this time. Then you press continue. Rotation, you select direct oblomin, also, uh, even though we're not going to really take a look at that today, but I explained it yesterday. Scores, you leave it as it is, and options, uh, you can also leave it as it is, uh, because we're not going to take a look at the pattern matrix today. So then you press paste. Then you say, <laughs> yeah, my cat is besides me. Hello, cat. <laughs> and um, your uh, if uh, a syntax wasn't opened yet, then it is right now. So you select the line for the uh, data and uh, for the uh, select the syntax line. You press the big green play button, which is run selection. Then a huge output output opens in the output screen. Uh, which first of all shows the correlation matrix and it's actually important uh, for what we are doing research on today. As you can see, if you're going to take a look at the correlations, you can see that the extrinsic values, uh, uh, the extrinsic items correlate in a positive manner to each other and they also correlate to a lesser extent to the intrinsic uh, value items and the same the other way around. The intrinsic uh, uh, motivation items correlate quite strongly to each other and only correlate a little bit to the extrinsic items. And what we're going to look at next is the KMO and Bartlett's test. And first of all, we're going to take a look at the Bartlett's test of sericity. And the most important, uh, the most important value of uh, that is the last one being the significance level, which is smaller than 0.001. And what this actually says is whether uh, this test shows whether the correlation matrix is the same as an identity matrix. And this sounds kind of vague, but it basically uh, show it basically the null hypothesis in the Bartlett test of sericity is that all the items are not correlated with each other, so that there is no correlation at all. Well, as we can see in the correlation matrix, there are lots of correlations. The 10 items correlate sometimes quite strongly to each other and at other times a bit weaker, but the items do correlate to each other. And therefore, it is not an identity matrix, but a correlation matrix because it shows correlations. So therefore, the nil hypothesis of, Bar of Bartlett's test of sericity, of Bartlett's test of sericity 
it can be rejected because it's smaller than 0 0.0000. So the first requirement is met because this significance level is smaller than 0 0.01 and therefore it shows that the uh, items do correlate with each other, which is a requirement if you want to do your factor analysis. The other analysis you uh, want to do is the kaiser meyer olkin measure of sampling adequacy, which is quite a mouthful. So that's why it's basically always described as the KMO test. And this, uh, this test, uh, so this value, shows whether there are actually underlying dimensions in this factor analysis. So in this case, we've, uh, we've shown yesterday that there are two underlying dimensions being external motiva extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. But it might be the case that this is not happening, that SPSS can't find a clear underlying dimensions, so no underlying components. And this, the KMO measures to what extent it can actually find predetermined underlying, uh, non -pre, uh, whether it can find underlying dimensions. And the rule of thumb is that it has to be above 0.5. That's average, and it's uh, if it's above 0.7, then it's good. If it is below 0.5, it means that SPSS struggles to find any underlying dimensions. So even though you were hoping that there are underlying dimensions, in this case that would be intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation, it can't really find them. In this case, the KMO is 0.839, which is really high, uh, which is a, a very, very good value. So therefore, we can conclude that you have passed the KMO requirements uh, because uh, the 0.839 is above uh, 0.5 and even above 0.7. So therefore, you've met the two requirements, being the KMO test and the Bartlett test of sericity, and then you can continue to the next, uh, then you can continue to the next, uh, uh, to the next matrices, be, uh, for example, the pattern matrix. So that was it for today. I hope that I explained to you, uh, how the KMO test and the Bartlett test of Sophisticity work. Uh, if it was helpful to you, then please leave a like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you have any questions, then feel free to answer them in the comment section down below. I most of the time answer them in the same day or at least in the same week. And I hope to see you guys on another day for another SPSS tutorial. Bye.